So if you are a fan of Magnus Carlsen, you might want to turn off this video because you're not going to like it. Today, I am going to analyze this awful letter that Magnus Carlsen posted on Twitter accusing Hans Niemann of cheating. So for some background, Magnus Carlsen is considered the greatest chess player in the world. Magnus recently lost to Hans Niemann, a lower ranked player who admitted to cheating in online chess games in the past. Magnus first hinted that Hans cheated, and then Magnus made a full-on accusation through a statement posted on Twitter. I'm consolidating the story a little bit just to get us moving faster into the actual writing lesson. So before we get started, I just want to point out I have no opinion on whether Hans Niemann really cheated. I don't even know how to play chess myself, and I just want to say I admire Magnus Carlsen for his drive and determination. I think he's an incredible human being. I just think this letter was really, really awful. So what you're about to learn is why you need to take the high ground when dealing with controversy and why we is better than I. So I copied Magnus' statement into this presentation so we can analyze it paragraph by paragraph. And at the end of this video, I will issue my score of Magnus' letter. And as you're probably going to imagine, it's not going to be very pretty. So why would you listen to me? My name is Michael Camo, and I've written everything from tweets to articles to video scripts to books to 100 plus page reports to things you can't even imagine. And my writing's been cited by the New York Times, the Wall Street Journals, Reuters, etc., etc. You know, pause the screen if you really want to see all these. So here we are at the first part of Magnus's letter. Dear Chess World, at the 2022 Singfield Cup, I made the unprecedented professional decision to withdraw from the tournament after my round three game against Hans Niemann. A week later during the Champions Chess Tour, I resigned against Hans Niemann after playing only one move. So Dear Chess World is a pretty bad opening. It's impersonal. I feel like something like to my fellow chess players would be a lot better because it's giving a feeling of we and not I, and that's going to be an ongoing theme in this video, that Magnus does a little too much I and not enough we. Something a little more personal that's kind of referencing the entire community would be much, much better. Overall, this is a bad opening because there's no emotion. Magnus should have taken the high ground by saying something like, cheating has no place in the game of chess. So what am I talking about when I say high ground? Well, in writing, when I say high ground, I mean it's a statement with which you can't disagree. You have to agree with it. For example, if Magnus started with something like cheating has no place in chess, we must protect the integrity of chess. We can't allow cheating to ruin chess. Everybody would be on his side right off the bat. So the high ground gets people on your side, raises the stakes, and it also makes you sound constructive instead of whiny because you're trying to solve a problem for the entire community. You're not just complaining because you think you got cheated. Okay, on to part two. I know that my actions have frustrated many in the chess community. I'm frustrated. I want to play chess. I want to continue to play chess at the highest level in the best events. So Magnus acknowledges he has caused frustration, which shows modesty. This is a very, very good thing. On the other hand, there's an awful lot of I here. Every single sentence starts with I and there's no we. Too much I and not enough we is usually a problem, especially when you're dealing with controversial material. And also the I want sentences are redundant. I want to play chess and I want to continue to play chess at the highest levels and the best events are kind of the same thing. He could have just said, I want to keep playing chess at the highest levels and something like that. That would have been fine. And again here, the, the, you know, there's no emotional hook. You could argue that maybe him being frustrated is an emotional hook, but for me, it doesn't really do much. Now, part three. I believe that cheating in chess is a big deal and an existential threat to the game. I also believe that chess organizers and all those who care about the sanctity of the game we love should seriously consider increasing security measures and methods of cheat detection for over-the-board chess. Uh, by the way, over-the-board chess means just chess in person rather than online. When Neiman was invited last minute to the 2022 Singfield Cup, I strongly considered withdrawing prior to the event. I ultimately chose to play. So we don't need to hear I believe because it's a letter from Magnus. We know what he believes. And... Finally, we get some emotional content. Cheating is an existential threat to the game would have been a pretty strong opening. And but it only comes like three paragraphs into the letter. So I think that's pretty weak. So let's move on to part four. I believe that Neiman has cheated more 
and more recently than he has publicly admitted. His over-the-board progress has been unusual, and throughout our game in the Singfield Cup, I had the impression that he wasn't tense or even fully concentrating on the game in critical positions while outplaying me as black in a way I think only a handful of players can do. This game contrib contributed to changing my perspective. So saying I believe here actually does make sense because it's an accusation without hard, hard evidence which is inherently a problem with this whole letter. Magnus also makes a pretty weak case for cheating. There's no specifics. And the worst part of all is that he brags here, which does him no favors. It makes it seem like he's a sore loser, that it's sour grapes, because he's kind of implying that there's, there's no possible way somebody like Hans Niemann could beat me, which, you know, just really rubs me the wrong way. I mean, whether or not Hans cheated, that sounds really bad. Okay, on to part five. We must do something about cheating. And for my part going forward, I don't want to play Play against people that have cheated repeatedly in the past because I don't know what they are capable of doing in the future. So we must do something about cheating is powerful. It's a high ground statement again because you can't disagree with it. He also could have taken a harder line by saying something like we must stop turning a blind eye to cheating. This would force the industry to overcompensate and go after cheaters even harder than they are now. I personally don't know how aggressive anti-cheating measures are, but if Magnus threw out something like that, it would really get a lot of attention and people would start asking questions. What are we really doing to stop cheating? So let's go on to number six, which is the last part of the letter, and then I'll give you my final score. There is more that I would like to say. Unfortunately, at this time, I'm limited in what I can say without explicit permission from Neiman to speak openly. So far, I have only been able to speak with my actions, and those actions have stated clearly that I am not willing to play chess with Neiman. I hope that the truth on this matter comes out, whatever it may be. So the last sentence is horrible. It's, it's just the worst. The truth is absolute. So you can't say whatever it may be. Magnus might have meant resolution, as in, I hope this matter gets resolved soon, whatever the result may be. It would, and I think this could be because, be because Magnus is not a native English speaker. So there could be something lost in translation there. But that last sentence is, is a real, real mess. Now, let's go over what Magnus did right and wrong here. So what Magnus did right, he laid out a commitment to truth and honor in chess. He acknowledged he caused frustration. And that's about it, because honestly, there's not much good in this letter. And what did he do wrong? Well, first he wrote this himself. I'm almost positive that a real PR person did not touch this because I cannot imagine a real PR person letting something like this go out. There's a ton of redundant statements, the adverbs, the focus on I, plus Magnus is not a native English speaker, which made some of the phrasing clunky. There's no emotional hook at the start or the end, and he did not shoot hard enough for that high ground. When you deal with controversial subjects, you have to take the high ground because that that keeps people on your side. And finally, he accused Hans of cheating, but gave no real details. So this letter fails on two different levels. The first is the emotional level because we're not really hooked in. And at the same time, you know, there's no logical payoff. There's no hard evidence that Hans cheated. So this, this thing is just a, a pretty big failure again. Magnus Carlsen is somebody I truly admire. He's an incredible human being. And I think he had good intentions with this, but it's just a total mess. So let's go to the final score. And my final score is 29 out of 100. This thing was just a mess. Terrible, 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 terrible. And if there actually was a PR person involved with this thing, you should be ashamed of yourself. But again, I don't think a PR person was involved. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you'll subscribe. I'll have a bunch of these wacky celebrity writing analysis videos coming again soon. And if you want to see a celebrity letter that was actually done really, really well, watch my video on Shia LaBeouf's letter to Olivia Wilde. It'll be flying around the screen somewhere or in the description. So again, hope you like this video. Talk to you later. Bye.